Probably one of the biggest questions and issues people have is piercing bumps. What is it and how do I get rid of it? Little disclaimer, I am not a doctor or a medical professional. I am a professional body piercer. I've been doing this a long time and I've seen a lot of bumps and I've gotten rid of a lot of bumps for people as well. So that's what we're talking about today, how to get rid of these bumps. So the first thing I'm talking about is the basics here. You need to be cleaning your piercing right and you need to not be agitating or irritating your piercing. Now, if you're doing everything right, generally those bumps aren't there. Most reason the bumps form is because of improper aftercare or you're just straight up irritating all the time and you don't even realize you're doing it. So that is the first thing. Now, when you're cleaning your piercing, watch my aftercare video. It goes in depth on how to do it, but basically you should be using a wound wash spray. Now, if you have an oral piercing, you're going to want to be using an alcohol-free mouthwash. So you're staying away from all that alcohol or the harsh chemicals. The second thing is you can't be touching or spinning your piercing. If you're spinning or rotating and touching with dirty hands, number one, it's going to get infected. But number two, those dried lymph fluids, crusties that are stuck to your piercing are scratching and irritating, which is causing that bump. Your body's trying to create a barrier scar tissue to protect it. Now, the thing is, is if it's too long, it's moving back and forth. So you gotta have the proper size. That means downsize some of your piercings in the future if they need it. The next thing is, is you're gonna have lots of friends and family telling you different things. And everyone generally means well, but the less you do, the better off you are. Harsh chemicals like peroxide, rubbing alcohol, neosporin generally cause more problems than help. Now, as far as any of the oils and different things people tell, the only thing I really like is gonna be emu oil. If you have a bump, a lot of times that's gonna calm down the inflammation and get rid of some of that redness and actually make it feel much, much better. It's the only oil I like to use. I use it on my piercings when they get irritated. I suggest it to my clients and they love it as well. So it's great stuff. Look into emu oil if you're looking to put anything on there. But the big thing is Get rid of the source of the problem, which is what's causing the bump, and then the bump will go away. Don't put stuff on there to try to eat it away. You might have heard like the aspirin method where you're crushing that up, creating a paste and putting that on there. That generally causes way more problems than helps. So stay away from that. There's other chemicals people are trying to put on there like Mederma and scar tissue remover. Well, the thing is, is you're trying to heal that tube of scar tissue through there and that's counterproductive to the healing process as well as getting rid of that bump. So you need to stay away from those as well. So it's real basic. Listen to your body. If something hurts, that's what's probably causing the problem. So up next, I'm gonna go through a series of a bunch of different pictures and I'm gonna tell you what those bumps most likely are, how they got them, and some of the best ways to treat or get rid of those bumps. One of the first ones we're gonna talk about is a helix piercing. That's the outer rim of your ear. Now, a lot of people are gonna get bumps on this piercing, and the reason they get bumps most likely is because the jewelry is too long or is being hit or irritated. Now, if you're still wearing masks, sometimes they get caught on there and pulled, combing your hair, brushing your hair, or not rinsing out all your shampoos or conditioners properly. So generally with these piercings, if you're getting a bump on there from the irritation and your piercing doesn't seem too long, make sure you clean your piercing after your shower with that wound wash spray, and a lot of times this can help. Now this first helix piercing we're looking at has a bump on the bottom side of it. Now when you're looking at the jewelry, you can see that that gem is not pointing straight forward, it's pointing up. Now because it's pointing up, that tells me it's either way too long a jewelry and it's kind of sagging in the back and it's changing angles or it was pierced improperly. In a situation like this, if it's already gone this far, that bump is really tough to get rid of and you might need to take the piercing out and just start over. The damage is kind of already done. Now this second bump we're looking at here on the Helix, it's hard to say specifically what would cause this, but this is a really common bump that people get. And chances are it's an irritation bump. This person probably caught a towel or a shirt, rag or loof on it, or even just slept on it wrong. If you're sleeping on it wrong, that jewelry can kind of twist and contort while it's in the ear. And a lot of times we don't even know the damage we're doing while we're sleeping on it. So try to protect it while you're sleeping. Be careful drying off in the shower bath. Like I said, those towels do cause a lot of damage. Industrial piercings also cause a lot of problems with bumps. Most of the time, it is because of the piercer piercing it improperly. Now, what I mean by that is you need two piercings that are aimed 
pretty much exactly at each other and parallel with each other. If one's at this angle, one's at this angle, what's happening is it's twisting your ear, causing all that distortion of the tissue, causing huge, huge bumps, just like this picture. No matter what someone did to take care of this piercing, chances are those bumps are going to happen no matter what. Here, it's super important to find a quality piercer who knows how to pierce properly, and that's going to eliminate the chance of the bumps. Now, the second industrial piercing we're looking at here has the bar in it, and you're going to see a little bit of a bump on the bottom. This is a common bump for a lot of industrial piercings, and it could be slightly off angle-wise when it was pierced, but chances are they were probably sleeping on it, caught a towel on it, just like I said earlier. There's, these piercings are tough to heal because most piercings can twist and contort in the ear, move as you're sleeping. This is stuck in one position, so you sleep on it wrong one night, it's real easy to get this bump. In a situation like this, if you get a bump like this, that emu oil can really help. And also, keep cleaning your piercing until those crusties are all the way off there. And do your best not to sleep on it. The nostril piercing is notorious for getting bumps. It seems like for a while there was almost half the people got some sort of a bump because catching it and snagging it on things, constantly touching it and playing with it, or having improper nostril screws in there, nose bones, or just way too long of a bar. Now the first nostril we're looking at here, you can see that it's probably bad jewelry. You can tell it's a cheaper steel, the gem's already fallen out of here, and that bump is huge. The reason that bump is huge is because that bar is so long that it moved back and forth, constantly irritating and scratching it, and that just built up a series of bumps, it looks like, almost like a triple stacked one. Now, if that jewelry was readjusted and shortened so it's nice and snug after it got healed up a little bit, chances are that bump would have gotten near as big or would have happened at all. Also with nostrils, one of the bigger issues people have is they go to a ring too soon. For a long, long time, I used to just give the customer what they wanted and like, yeah, it takes a little bit longer to heal up, but the bumps almost always happen. Now, on this picture here, you can see that bump on the top. They probably put the ring in too soon. Generally, what I tell customers is that you wanna wait a minimum of three months. That's the absolute minimum time before you think about putting a ring in there. And what I like the piercing to be is fully, fully healed for maybe a month, month and a half where you completely forget about it, and then it might be comfortable enough to heal that ring. Now, here's the deal. The needle is straight, and when the piercing's done, it's perfectly straight and perpendicular to the tissue. Now, when you put a ring in there, that ring is curved. So you're putting a curved ring through a straight hole and a lot of times it pinches and pulls down on the sides. That's why bumps like this happen. Now, if your piercing is fully healed and comfortable and relaxed, it has a little bit of movement, that little bit of curve in there doesn't cause the issue and that's how you can heal this up. So make sure your piercing's fully healed up. And if you go to the ring and that bump happens, don't fight it. Go back to the stud, heal it up for another month or so, and a lot of times the ring will work a month, two months after that. Just be patient. Next, we're going to be talking about the navel piercing. Now, first thing I want to say about the navel piercing is pants are generally the biggest issue people have, besides changing out your jewelry too much. If you wear high-waisted pants and they are rubbing directly up against your piercing, you're going to have bumps you're gonna have irritation and it's gonna take forever to heal if it even heals at all. So if you're gonna get this piercing, you need to wear the appropriate clothes to heal this up. Now, the first picture we're looking at here, I can tell you right now, the reason the bumps are there are probably not because of the person who got pierced, but because of the piercer. Now, the reason there's bumps on the top and bottom is because the piercing was pierced too deep in. Because it's deep in, it's lifting up on the belly, causing the bump on the front, on the bottom there. It's, imagine that pulling up all the time, that's just a barrier of scar tissue to protect it. Now, that is also pushing back on the belly on the top, which is the reason why there is a bump on the back side of the bead. It makes perfect sense when you break it down. It was pierced too deep at the wrong angle. Maybe if they put a regular curved barbell in there with no gem, it might heal up. But then again, that takes the fun out of wearing the gem jewelry. This next navel piercing didn't have a chance at all. This is a surface piercing, not a navel piercing. It wasn't pierced into the actual curve of the belly button and it's trying to surface its way out. It has the bump on the bottom because it's going perpendicular to the tissue. I'm amazed they got this far. This should be taken out immediately. 
The last thing I really want to talk about here is going to be keloids. A keloid is a medical condition where the scar tissue and tissue continues to grow, creating massive scars. Now, if you are prone to this, you would probably know about it already. Any normal cut or scrape on your arm or hand or face would create that big scar. Now, as you can see in the pictures up here, these are keloids probably from a simple earlobe piercing. It's unfortunate, so if you are prone to keloids, do not get pierced. This is always a possibility and it's, it's so tough to treat. I don't know if there's really any treatment for it any at this point. If you know about it, say something down below because that would help us all out, but it's a scary condition. So keloids are different than piercing bumps. Chances are you probably have the piercing bump. If you really think it's a keloid and it's growing, you should talk to a doctor or some sort of medical professional. So if you learned something today, I helped you out, let me know in the comments below. Make sure to give me a like, subscribe, and of course, keep putting holes your body. We'll see you all in the next video.